What do you think? Gold trigger. Huh? You got I the, got gold the golden egg. Hey folks, how's it going? It's been a while since I've done a video like this. Let's see if I can still remember how to do it. Then again, I probably didn't even know how to do it to begin with, so I guess we're at the status quo. Shotguns, double barrel shotguns, over and under shotguns. My dream as a teenage boy. You know, I wanted a well-finished, good-looking, sweet shooting, good old-fashioned American version of an over and under. You know, a classy upland bird gun. My eye was always drawn to the Browning Satori's. It's kind of what was, you know, that's what you read about in the magazines. But at the age of 16, I couldn't afford a shotgun that was 2,000, 2,500 bucks or 3,000 bucks. So it was a dream. Well, fast forward 25 years later, and I finally bought one. Well, I bought one, but it's not mine. A couple years ago, I'm in a gun shop with my wife, kind of browsing around and seeing what they got. But the only thing that caught her eye, she had no idea what the gun was, but the only thing that caught her eye was a gold trigger. She's like, I want the gun with the golden trigger. And I picked up the gun, and it was this gun right here. So, Browning Satori, Hunter Grade 2. And, you know, sitting there in the gun rack, and I pick it up, and I look, and it's a 28 gauge. And I'm thinking, boy, that'd be a good size gun for her. Uh, you know, I had 26 inch barrels, so kind of a little lighter in the front. We don't buy the gun, we walk out, we leave. And as I'm driving down the road, I'm thinking, the next day that I have to go into work, I'm gonna go in early, I'm gonna swing in and buy that gun. We were planning on going bird hunting, I think the following weekend. And I'm gonna try to surprise her with it. I get a little surprise for my wife. A week ago, we were out. She saw a shotgun that she really liked. So I went and picked it up for her. And she has no idea that I bought it for her. Here, we'll take a look. And I got Lizzie surprised too in the truck. It's hidden under there. She has no idea. She actually did just find the receipt in the pickup. She's like, do you need this receipt to the gun shop? <laughs> she didn't look at it, thank God. So, so I guess I'll surprise her tomorrow some way. I haven't figured out how I'm gonna do it yet, but I don't know, play by ear. Reese, can you grab your gun out of the back for me? Please. You bought that? Oh. <laughs> Why did you do that? Oh. I got what do you the think? gold trigger. Huh? You got I the, got gold the golden egg. Yeah. So there, so this gun's already got a story. So let's talk about it. We're gonna go over some of the reasons why I really wanted a Browning Satori. Do we like it? How does it look? How does it feel? How does it handle? How does it shoot? How does it carry? What I'm happy with? And some of the things I'm disappointed with. Some of the things I wouldn't have expected that I was gonna be disappointed with. And then you can decide for yourself whether it's worth the purchase or maybe you should look elsewhere. So just real quick, let's go over the specs in this gun. So to start, it has a full transverse mounted, full width locking bolt and monoblock recess for more strength and longevity. I have no friggin' idea what all that means. <laughs> it's on their website, sounds good. But some of the more meaningful specs, has a good recoil pad, inertia trigger, hammer ejectors, chrome chambers. Those chambers are two and three quarter inch. It's a 28 gauge, 26 inch barrel. Length of pull is 14 and a quarter inches. Overall length is 43 inches. Comes in at just shy of seven pounds, six pounds, 12 ounces. More on the weight of this gun later. So you get all that? Let's not get too nerded out on the specs, but there's things about this gun that I really like that are beyond the specs of this gun. Um, you know, I like guns with a story, and I like guns with meaning, and this gun has some meaning. We'll start right off with aesthetics. That's probably a woman's number one priority. So this is a nicely appointed little gun. It's got a little higher quality walnut, gloss metalwork, and a silver nitride finish on the receiver with just a few little accents of gold here and there. And I'm not a big fan of gold on a shotgun. This has just enough to make it not too gaudy. And of course, it has the golden trigger that she picked up right away. But I really could sum this gun up in one sentence. It looks nice enough to put on display, but not too nice that you don't want to take it out of a gun cabinet. So many guns are bought and never used uh, just because they're a nice gun. And this is a gun where that kind of the Browning Satori's, that whole line, is kind of a good blend of where aesthetics meets utility. You know, and I get that the looks of a gun, the aesthetics of a gun, are a lot of personal preference. A lot of people like a lot of different things, and it has very little effect on the performance of the gun as a whole. 
hunting's a hobby for me. The aesthetics of a gun hold a pretty high value. I want to enjoy a gun when I'm out hunting. I want to enjoy the whole experience. If I was going to be just totally 100% you know, utilitarian, I don't think the experience would be as enjoyable. You know, I, I want a gun that maybe I sit down on a stump someplace to have a snack, you know, in the nice fall sun, kind of soak up the rays, and I get to look down at a beautiful gun and kind of just enjoy it in that sense. It doesn't have to be 100% utilitarian. So, I mean, I, I think you've got to have some balance there. It's nice to have a gun that you like to carry out in the woods. You know, and even for me, I'll come up in the off season in my room, come up to the gun cabinet, open up the gun cabinet, grab some guns, sit down, just kind of look at them. Kind of remember past hunts, look at the gun, you know, and just really enjoy the aesthetics of it. And that says something. But yeah, she's a pretty gun, but not too pretty to use. So let's talk about the build quality and reliability that really Browning is known for. You know, especially considering these are production guns, this isn't the handmade one-off, you know, bespoke gun that, that's being made custom for somebody. Uh, you know, they're made as a production gun, trying to market it to the greatest number of people and keeping the gun usable to more people, um, you know, than maybe some of the custom guns would be. This gun is new and it's still, it's a very tight gun. Uh, the action is, it's very tight very well fitting and i guess this must be the monoblock that they're talking about in the description i have no idea um but you can see right there how it but right now it's a very tight gun um, even getting this gun apart it takes a little bit of elbow grease to get the fore end off um, to really break it down which i really think with time the more it gets used the more you take carry it out in the field it's just gonna get better, better with use. I don't foresee this uh, really ever getting loose. The receiver and everything fits very well together. So the build quality is great and you've got to assume there's not really a whole lot with this to go wrong. So you're gonna have years and years of use and probably will be passed down to my kids someday and hopefully my grandkids and so on and so forth. That's the great thing about guns. They have kind of a continual story that just gets passed down, passed down, it evolves to additional generations and you know, guns become special that way. You know, a lot of the guns that I own don't have a high monetary value, but they are basically irreplaceable guns. They have such a personal value. So I hear a lot of people kind of echo that same message. If I do a video on a gun and I, I talk about a gun and you have people that leave comments saying, you know, this gun is special to me because it was gifted to me by my grandfather or my father um, who has now passed on, or my father handed it down to me who has now passed on and you just can't replace those. They have meaning that is very special. So after that side note, back to the build quality. It's got a pretty good trigger pull, nice clean break. I think the trigger pull is about four and a half pounds. The safety and barrel selector, I'm not really impressed with. It has a very unsatisfying click, kind of pushes fairly hard. Yeah, definitely the safety doesn't have the feel of like a high quality, you know, click. Like I've got a good side by side that, oh, that safety's butter. Like it's, yeah, it's perfect. It's like the perfect pressure to, oh yeah, it's money. So I guess we can say it's a solid shotgun, but it'll only improve with time. I think it's gonna be reliable. I think my, hopefully my grandkids and, and their kids and their kids and their kids will have this gun someday. Um, so it should be in the family for a long time. Well, if someone doesn't, pawn it for some money or something. All right, let's get into the nitty gritty. Like how, how does it shoot and handle? Like that's great, it looks good, and that's great, you know, it's quality and reliable and all that stuff, but how does it shoot? You wanna have a good day out in the field and you don't wanna be missing birds and, and having to lug a kind of a clunky old clubbish like feeling gun around all day. So it's a well-balanced gun, shoulders very nicely. Point of aim is great. The gun uses a single front bead and it has a 50-50 point of impact. We haven't patterned this gun yet. Maybe a future video. The gun is slight heavy and particularly for my wife who's petite, the 26 inch barrel is great for her. She has less of that front end weight, which if she shoots one of my 12 gauges, you know, she has a hard time keeping it up. She can shoot it fantastic, but it gets heavy her holding that up if we're out ski shooting or something like that. So the shorter barrels are perfect for her. I will say this gun is a bit long for her. Recoil pad's gonna be coming off shortly and we are gonna cut this gun down. That'll be a future video probably. Because even with me, I'm not a big fan of recoil pads. Great looking gun, 
shoots well, does what it's supposed to do. There's a lot to like about it, but there are some disappointing things with this gun. First and foremost is the weight. I really think a good shotgun should weigh five and a half, six pounds. Some people like a little heavier shotgun because they can swing a little smoother. And we, you know, we did pick it up in the gun store and stuff like that and uh, thought it was fine. And you know, the price was right, it was a good opportunity. Uh, so we seized the, the moment, but it is slightly heavy. I think that could be something that could be improved upon. It does swing well. She shoots clays with it phenomenally. The foregrip is a bit bulky and you probably could save some weight there. Not a deal breaker by any means, but I think, you know, if you could get this down to five and a half, six pounds, that would be fantastic. Uh, I think seven pounds is a little bit on the, on the hefty side uh, for a 28 gauge. One of my biggest beefs with this gun and when I picked it up is the freaking checkering. It's like a cheese grater. Like literally, it is like, man. It is rough. Yeah, you have a good grip on the gun, but it's not an elephant gun. It's a 28 gauge. It's not like it's gonna come flying out of your hands. I think with time, that'll smooth over. But it's one thing that it, that's funny that I've read about over the years, especially with regards to checkering. If you read books about fine shotguns made in, say, Europe, checkering is basically something they do. It's like an afterthought. Total difference uh, between the checkering that's done on, on some of the finer guns overseas in comparison to some of the American made guns. And you'll see that with a lot of people when you're talking to someone about a gun, oftentimes it comes up as like, what's the checkering like? You know, how's the checkering? Is it good checkering? And it's like, what's the deal with checkering? Like, yeah, you want it to look nice and, and uh, help you hold on to the gun. You also don't want it to be a pumice stone, shred your hands to pieces. Um, so I'm not a fan of the checkering. It does not feel good in the hands at all. Uh, but I think with time, that'll wear down and that'll become less of a cumbersome feeling. Out of the box, it comes with three chokes that are flush fitting, come in full, modified and improved cylinder. But you may have noticed that I have some extended choke tubes on this one, and that's for a couple of reasons. One, they improve the pattern. Two, they're ported for reduced felt recoil. Probably more importantly is extended choke tubes are easier to change. I don't need a wrench, just do them with my fingers. But the biggest reason why we have extended choke tubes on this, and don't get on me about this, because yes, we shoot birds on the ground in Maine, and we don't lose sleep over it. Extended choke tubes are gonna preserve the end of the barrel. Gun spends a significant amount of time riding in the pickup. We have a lot of logging roads in Northern Maine. We may be traveling from one place to another to go bird hunting. We may spend an afternoon driving around bird hunting and having an extended choke tube on the gun, we don't have to worry about damaging the end of the barrels. So another reason why a gun like this, you know, it's, it's pretty, it's nice, but it's not too pretty and too nice to lug it around in the pickup and have a good time with it. So coming in at say ballpark at $2,400, would I buy this gun again? 100% yes. You know, think of the population that this gun is designed to satisfy. Think of like a bell curve. And you've got basically, you know, custom gun owners that want one off on this end, very few of them. You've got maybe some, some people that don't care, they just want the, the cheapest thing that they can get their hands on, they don't care if it lasts very long, they just want the cheapest thing they can find. And this gun kind of satisfies the greatest number of people as far as getting an aesthetically pleasing gun, a nice quality gun that's well known, that you don't mind showing off a little bit, you don't mind putting it on display, but you also don't mind carrying it through the brush, putting it in the pickup, running through the woods, maybe a little rain, water, isn't gonna be a deal breaker. Cause look, I've got both ends of the spectrum. Actually, wait a minute. Hold on, now look, let's, let's talk about this end of the spectrum. It's a 20 gauge, Side by side, Guria 216RB, made in Spain. Handmade gun, superb shooting gun. Oh, light, well balanced. But this gun is on this end of the spectrum. It's not a gun that you wanna throw in the pickup, drive around all day, haul it through the bush. You're a little more hesitant to do those things with it. Um, I use this gun, I bought it to use, but it's like four times the price of a Browning Satori. So I'm a little more reserved. I'm not gonna set it between my legs in the pickup and drive around bumpy roads all day, but I'm still gonna use it because I didn't buy this gun just to look at it. So now on the other end of the spectrum, we've got a super cheap gun. This is a, I think it's a Remington Spartan. I bought this in the early 2000s. I mean, this is a clubby hunk of metal. 
I can hit stuff with it. I can shoot skeet with this all day long. My wife can shoot skeet with this all day long, but it's heavy. It doesn't feel well. It's a clunky gun, but I think it was like 500 bucks or under 500 bucks. You know, it's kind of, it's, well, it's not the most sturdy gun. The checkering's horrendous. The wood's terrible. Um, I even refinished it myself when I bought it. But I don't mind throwing this in the pickup. It's kind of my truck gun. If I'm deer hunting and I'm gonna go bird hunting real quick or do something like that, after shooting a deer, you know, I'm gonna grab this gun. And it does a trick. It's not nice to look at. I don't come up here and look at it and kind of dream about it. It shoots and it goes bang. And I usually hit what I'm shooting at. So we got two opposite ends of the spectrum. And this gun basically lies right in the middle and covers a whole population of people that this gun will fit perfect for. So my final thoughts on this gun, and I know on guns in general, I like guns that have a story. I like guns that evoke some sort of feeling. It doesn't have to be 100% utilitarian. Hunting is a hobby and I want my feelings to get in the way. That's part of the whole experience. A lot of us have guns that are valuable for more than just monetary reasons. They have memories, they have a history, they have a story, they have a connection to other people within our family. And that's what makes guns so special. This Browning Satori now has a story. It was a dream of mine as a child, and I'll never forget the look on my wife's face when I surprised her with it. I got what do you the think? gold trigger. Huh? You got I the, got gold the golden egg. So should you buy a Browning Satori Hunter Grade 2? I don't know, it's your call. Only you know what warms your soul. Only you know what makes you feel good. Only you know what makes your hunting experience that much better. You know, do your research, blend that with your likes, your wants, your memories, and your story. At the end of the day, the best shotgun with the best specs may not be your best shotgun. First shot with a new gun. I think we get dinner tonight. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Oh my God, I don't know why I take notes. I mean, I know why I take notes, but this is terrible. Can you guys read that? I can't read my own handwriting. <laughs> oh well, just go for memory.